Dollywood's Lightning Rod is one of the world's most ambitious coasters. This ride was manufactured by Rocky Mountain Construction, or RMC, and opened in 2016 as the first ever launched wooden roller coaster. While putting a launch on a wooden coaster was a revolutionary achievement, it has caused the ride to suffer tons of downtime. Lightning Rod has had a rocky history, pun intended, and it has gone through several changes over the past seven years. In fact, it was just recently announced that the launch will be removed at the end of October. With that being announced, I figured now would be the best time to review this coaster since it's not going to be this way for long, so I'll be giving my thoughts on this outstanding RMC in this video. Here are the stats for Lightning Rod. This ride has a max speed of 73 miles an hour, which made it the world's fastest wind coaster at the time. Due to the terrain Lightning Rod sits on, the max height is 207 feet tall, technically making it a hyper coaster, and it has a 165 foot drop. The ride covers 3,800 feet of track, and the launch supposedly reaches 45 miles per hour at its max speed. Lightning Rod is located in the jukebox junction section towards the front of Dollywood, and the whole area around the coaster is very well themed. You got different props resembling an old school gas station, along with some other car related theming. You'll have plenty of time to take in the theming, as you'll definitely have to wait a while the ride lightning rod, assuming it's actually open. Due to its location towards the front of Dollywood, a lot of people will go there first. The other coasters are found towards the back of the park, so this means lightning rod will get significantly longer lines than any other coaster. I visited Dollywood on two separate occasions in June of 2023, and lightning rod had by far the longest line in the park both times I visited, even over the park's new for 2023 roller coaster at Big Bear Mountain. The coaster itself looks great as it towers over the trees. However, most of the layout cannot be seen from inside the park. Once you get into lightning rod's queue, there is more car-related theming across multiple different floors. I have noticed that this coaster tends to run just one train despite the line usually being long. If they run two trains, which they actually did for my first visit this year, the line should hopefully take you no more than 30 to 40 minutes. If they're running one train, expect to wait an hour at least. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you'll be assigned a row. If you request a certain row, your request may or may not be granted. It really depends on the crew member assigning rows when you go to ride it. In terms of seating, I'm exclusively a front row rider for any forwards launch coaster no matter what elements may be better experienced towards the back, and lighting rod is no exception to that, except for the one time my row request for the front got denied, so I got assigned the back. Even though it was good to get the experience in the back, I much prefer the front row over the back row, as pretty much everything about that ride was better in the front to me, not just the launch. Once it's your turn to ride, you board one of RMC's first generation trains. These are similar to the trains found on other RMC's such as Goliath at Six Flags Great America or Twisted Cyclone at Six Flags over Georgia. So if you've ridden either of those but not Lightning Rod, they feel very similar. The one difference I noticed on Lightning Rod's trains is that there are extra handles for you to grab on during the ride. These RMC lap bars are heavy like all the other ones are, and the ops weren't always stapling when I went. After likely waiting a long time, it's time for you to experience the insanity that is Lightning Lightning Rod. The ride starts by making a right turn out of the station, all while you can hear the revving of a hot rod engine. This is a really nice touch, and it builds the anticipation for what's to come. That being said, your ride experience was still at risk of being cut short, as the train is quickly approaching the launch up the side of the mountain. Like I said before, this is the main reason why Lightning Rod was so problematic, and if you're unlucky, the ride will roll back. This happened to me on my last ride during my first trip to Dollywood this year, and it was actually the last ride of the night. Because of that, the ride crew had to evacuate the train I was in from the launch track, meaning we didn't get to experience the full ride. If the ride didn't roll back, you'll suddenly find yourself blazing up the side of the mountain. Before I go any further, I should mention that before I rode Lightning Rod in 2023, I had only ridden it once. It was in 2016 when it first opened, and the launch was full speed back then. It has been slowed down a considerable amount since then. However, I didn't remember anything about my 2016 ride going into 2023, so I had no idea what to expect from this launch. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It felt like there were two phases to it. The first was the ride getting onto the actual hillside, and then the second phase was the main launch up the mountain. The force on this launch was great, and it felt similar to the launch lift hill found on the Incredible Hulk coaster at Islands of Adventure. The launch does let off quite early, so I didn't get any airtime in the front or back when I crested the top. Once the train successfully clears the top of the launch, you successfully scored a ride on Lightning Rod. The train dips down a little bit before cresting the top of the first drop. Lightning Rod then plunges 165 feet down the mountain. I gotta say, this drop was the one part of the ride that I was disappointed by, except for the launch in the back row. Most RMC first drops I've experienced were absolutely incredible. Just look at the ones on Steel Vengeance, Outlaw Run, and most notably Iron Gwazi. Those gave incredible ejector airtime in the back row. Lightning Rod's first drop just didn't do it for me. It's definitely my least favorite first drop on any RMC that I've experienced, even behind the barrel roll down drops on rides like Twisted Timbers at King's Dominion. Once you're at the bottom of the first drop, you enter a massive wave turn. Like all wave turns, this gave some great sideways air time. Then comes by far the roughest part of the ride for me, the valley after the wave turn. This was downright brutal in the back row, and it left me with a headache that lasted for a good while. It wasn't as bad in the front, but it definitely stapled me if I wasn't already stapled by then. Lightning Rod then turns to the right and then enters the first of two twist and shout elements. This element was way more aggressive than I was expecting it to be, especially on the right side of the train since it turns the opposite direction. As if the first twist and shout didn't already have great airtime, the second one that immediately follows has even better airtime. Lightning Rod switches over to the iBox track it got in between 2020 and 2021, and then it starts to climb back up the mountain while lounging riders out of their seats once again. At this point, it's all downhill from here, and I mean that literally. It is time for the legendary quad down. I was really intrigued to see if this set of airtime moments would be the best of all time like I've heard several people say. While the airtime I got in this sequence was absolutely insane, it's not my favorite airtime moment I've experienced, believe it or not. That still goes to the zero g roll on the Incredible Hulk coaster, which gave me sustained upside 
Quiet Down airtime, and that's pretty hard to beat in my book. The Quiet Down is still second for me. The first hill was ridiculous, and then each of the subsequent hills was even more insane than the previous. Lightning Rod picks up so much speed as it travels down the mountain before rocketing over the speed hill over the launch track. This is the best speed hill I've experienced, as it had the strongest airtime with how fast it took it. Lightning Rod then speeds through the final turn, and the positive Gs on this element caught me off guard. I ended up leaning forward to this whole element, especially up front. It reminded me a lot of Hulk's twister section after the vertical loop when I got those two rides where the train slammed to a stop on the mid course. Once at the top of that last turn, riders get one more pop of airtime before diving down into the final brakes, ending their out of control ride experience on Lightning Rod. When I hit the brakes on my first ride this year, I couldn't see anything for about a minute and a half at least because I was shocked by what I had just experienced. Now it's time to give Lightning Rod a final score. Depending on the person you ask, this score will probably vary. In my mind, there's no doubt that Lightning Rod gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Between the insane launch up the hill, the great wooded setting, the ridiculous pacing, and outstanding airtime, Lightning Rod was way better than I was expecting it to be. Granted, before my 2023 rides that I'm basing my review on, I'd only ridden it once back in 2016. 2023 was my first time riding it with a critical eye. Despite hearing other enthusiasts say it's overrated and not as good as it once was, I think Lightning Rod does not deserve the hate it gets. Some enthusiasts say Thunderhead is the best ride at Dollywood now after retreat tracking this year. While I do agree that Thunderhead is really good, there's no way it's better than Lightning Rod for me. I will say that I do prefer Thunderhead over the back row ride I got on Lightning Rod though. And as weird as this may sound, I think Lightning Rod has become underrated, and I never thought I'd say that about what was originally the world's first launch wooden roller coaster. But it's not the most underrated RMC I've ridden, that still goes to Twisted Colossus. As for where Lightning Rod ranks for me out of 292 coasters, I have it ranked at number 4 overall, and it's also my top RMC. Hardly anyone seems to have Lightning Rod as a top RMC anymore, especially with rides like Steel Vengeance, Iron Gwazi, Air Force One, and Wildcat's Revenge opening recently. But the launch getting removed, Lightning Rod isn't as safe as it once was as my top RMC. Those are just my thoughts on Lightning Rod as it currently stands. I want to know what you guys think of this RMC as it currently stands right now. Do you think it's still the best ride at Dollywood, or do you prefer Thunderhead or any of the other coasters that park over it? I'm also curious to see how successful you've been with getting on this coaster, because I've heard there's a lot of enthusiasts who've had trouble getting on this ride. I made three trips to Dollywood in my life, and I've somehow gotten on all three times, so I feel extremely lucky there. Post any thoughts you have about Lightning Rod in the comments below, and let me know if you're excited to ride the new version of this coaster. Of course, before you click off of this video, please be sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to comment what you enjoyed about this video, and be sure to share it with someone else you may know. If you're new to this channel and like what you saw, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more content like this. I'd appreciate you subscribing and turn the bell on so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take whenever I visit Parks and Beach checking it out. There as well, be the link in the description. And also, be sure to leave a comment below about what because you want to see me review, and I can see if I can do it. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you later.